Hi, Doug from Orcus here, and thanks for checking out our order fulfillment code lab. In this code lab, we're going to build a Netflix conductor workflow to help Bob's widgets handle their order fulfillment and their shipping. And in the first section of our workflow, in the first section of this code lab, we're going to build our first workflow. And so I thought it'd be useful to talk through what are the different parts of a conductor workflow. We're doing all of this in the Orcus Playground, which is free. It's at play.orcus.io. Um, and so you can create an account with just your email address or your social login and try it out. But what a workflow is, this is your workflow. And it has a start and a finish, and there are a bunch of tasks inside each workflow. In the first section of this code lab, we're going to build a really simple workflow with just one task in it, widget shipping. This is all defined in JSON, and we'll get to that in a second. But before we go through that, I thought it might be useful to go through a more, a slightly bigger workflow that's still very simple to understand all the different steps and what Conductor can do to help you wire up all of your tasks together. And to do that, I thought we would use an instructable on how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And what I've done is I've followed the instructions in this instructable and I've created a Conductor workflow. And so what Conductor work, a Workflow does is it takes all of the tasks that need to be done and it sets up the order that they need to be run in. And these are the instructions as per the Instructable. And so what you do, and I, this is all done in JSON. Um, it doesn't actually run because I don't have any robots to do this, but it's just to wire it up to show the order that it needs to be done. And so first you collect your ingredients and you open up your bread bag and you place two pieces of bread on a plate. You open up the peanut butter and you open up the jelly. You spread the peanut butter on the left side, you spread the jelly on the right slice, you close the sandwich, you clean up, and then you eat. And that's the end of your workflow. So these are all steps that need to be run to make a sandwich, and they kind of need to be done in this order. You can't spread the peanut butter on the bread before you get the bread out. And you can't clean up before you've collected the ingredients. They have to be run in this order. Those are the steps of the recipe to make your peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Now, you might imagine if I'm making, a, there are other things you can do in Conductor to help streamline the way you make uh, your workflow go. Now you might imagine, what if you're making a thousand peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and for whatever reason, the peanut butter hasn't arrived yet. You've got all the jelly, um, and you need to make a thousand sandwiches, and let's just say there's no concern about space. You could take out all the bread, and then you're like, right, you can open up the peanut butter and open the, you can't open the peanut butter. So you're stuck. You can't do anything. You can't go further. Now, in this case, these tasks don't necessarily need to be run in this order. We can actually create a fork. And a fork says these tasks are asynchronous. They can run at the same time, They can, but they both need to be completed before we can close the sandwich. So if we have the jelly, we could spread out all the bread. We could open up the jelly and spread the jelly on all of our sandwiches. And then when the peanut butter comes, we can finish this task once these are done. We can close the sandwich, continue, and clean up, and then eat, right? So this is sort of how Conductor allows us to arrange the order of our different tasks to run. Each one of these tasks can be run in as a worker. So when a, the task comes up, a queue is opened up, and our worker picks up the work and says, ah, I've opened up the peanut butter. That's completed. Now we can move on to this one. And, we can, can, and all of those workers can be running in the cloud. They can be running on your local computer. They could be running on a Raspberry Pi. It doesn't matter. They just listen to the conductor server to know if there's work to be done. So with that, we've got a brief introduction to how conductor works. In our next video, we'll actually get started with our order fulfillment code lab, and we'll build our first worker in our first task to get started to help Bob ship his widgets. Thanks for joining us on this journey. It's going to be a lot of fun.